Okay, now we come to the concept of the closure operation, which is one of the operations that we're going to need to complete uh, the full algorithm that builds up the uh, state table for the SLR parser. And there's, if we have a set of I items, we want to be able to compute the closure of I. And there's two basic rules uh, that we use. The first rule is that all items in I get added to the closure of I. So that's pretty simple. Cl the closure of I is just seeded with the same items that were originally in I. Then we have the second rule, which looks a little weird. I've written it out a little bit different than what's in the book. But basically, we're going to find every item in I that has this pattern where A produces alpha dot B beta. And I'll spend a little time on this because I know, you know, when I first looked at this, I think, God, this notation is just kind of weird. Um, but we can break this down methodically and figure out what this means. So for every item I that matches that, uh, this pattern, then we're going to go and add new items B produces dot gamma. For each production, B produces gamma in the original grammar. Okay, so let's look at what that really is saying. Let's look at an example. Okay, so one of the things that they end up doing, one of the I's that ends up being important to start off the construction is a set that contains the augmented grammar initial term e prime produces dot e okay and we want to take the closure of this set okay so by the first rule we know that everything in i gets added to the closure of i so E prime produces dot E is in the closure of I. And now we've got to apply that second rule with those weird Greek letters in it. So let's go over to a separate work area here and kind of attack this. So we've got an item that says E prime produces dot E. And we're going to look for patterns in that uh, that second rule, okay, and the pattern said find everything that has an A produces alpha dot B beta, okay. So this is they're essentially describing a pattern here, and they're saying, do you see any items in the set uh, that match this pattern. Okay, so what does this mean? And let's refresh our memory about what this means. Now remember when they use a capital A, back to our notation conventions, they're talking about a non-terminal, right? And that makes sense because the left side is always a non-terminal, so that's not particularly earth-shattering. And then on the right-hand side, we want alpha. And what's alpha? That's a Greek letter, and the Greek letter is a string of symbols which could be zero or more. Remember, it could be the empty string. Okay, then a dot, then B. What's B? B is another, because it's a, a capital letter, capital English letter early in the alphabet, so that means another non-terminal. Okay, so a dot followed by non-terminal followed by beta, which is another Greek letter. So we're back to another string of symbols, zero or more, which also could be empty. Okay, so does, so does this pattern match this item? That's the question. And the answer is yes. You might not think it does when you look at it, it looks kind of weird, but let's look how this matches up. Okay, so A is going to match E prime, because E prime is a non-terminal. Okay, the arrow matches that arrow. And now, what does alpha match? Okay, alpha matches an empty string that's just sitting here, plain as day, right in front of the dot. 
Okay, so there are in fact zero or more characters that match alpha right before the dot. Okay, then the dot is going to match that. B is going to match E because E is non-terminal. And then beta is another empty string that's sitting there just plain as day right after E. And so what we have is a match where A is equal to E, alpha is equal to an empty string, B is equal to E, and beta is equal to an empty string. So basically what all this rule is really trying to have us do uh, and it's just a fancy way of um, describing this more precisely is it's just saying on the right hand side of the equation just look for a bunch of stuff followed by a dot followed by a non-terminal non-terminal you know followed by a bunch of stuff and so it's just fine saying find all the non-terminals that have a dot right in front of it okay that's all it's saying and then what do we do with that once we find it? Now that's saying, you know, we want to add we want to add items that look like b produces dot gamma for every uh, production b goes to gamma in the original grammar. Okay, so here again b is a non-terminal. That's now in this case we match B, so we're looking for the E productions in the grammar, right? Because that's what in this uh, particular iteration through this exercise, B is equal to E. So we're going to look for the E productions, and then what's gamma? That's just another string of zero or more non-terminals, right? So what this is saying is go back to the original grammar, okay, and find all of the E productions. Okay, well, where are the E productions? They're right here. Okay, these are the E productions. And then it's just saying add the item that looks like B produces dot gamma for every production B produces gamma. So it's just saying take the production and put a dot in front of it. That's all it's trying to, that's all it's trying to say. Okay. So back to the grammar. So we're going to add E produces dot E plus T and E produces dot T to the grammar, to the closure of I rather. Okay, so what we just did based on the application of that rule is we just added E produces dot E plus T and E produces dot t. So now we've just completed the first iteration of rule number two on this item. Okay, So we're done with this item and now we go and keep doing that over and over again for all the items that are in i and we just added two new items so we got to keep going. So now this says look for all the uh, non-terminals on the right hand side for this item that have an a dot in front of a non-terminal. Okay, we have that right here with the dot E. We've got a non-terminal E. So it's saying to add all the E productions if they're not already in the set. But from the first iteration, we just added all the E productions. So we're done with this item. Okay, now we keep going and apply the rule to E produces dot T. Do we have a dot immediately in front of a non-terminal? Yes, we've got uh, the T is the non-terminal. There's a dot right in front of it. So we're going to go back to the original grammar. I'm going to find all the T productions right here. Okay, there's two of them in the original grammar. We're going to add it with the dot in front of it. So we're going to add T produces dot T star F and T produces dot F to the closure of I. Okay, so we've got T produces dot T star F and T produces dot F. Okay, and now we've now completed that rule for this item. We keep going. 
we apply the same pattern in the next item. Do we have a dot in front of a non-terminal? Yep, right here. And so we add all the T productions, which we've already done. So we check this one off. Okay, now we go here, dot in front of a non-terminal. F is the non-terminal. Okay, we go back to the original. We find the F productions in the original grammar, which are right here. And so we add those productions with the dot in front of them. So we add F produces dot left parenthesis E right parenthesis and F produces dot ID. And so we've now completed rule number two for this item and we keep going. And now we say uh, for this item, do we have a dot in front of a non-terminal? No, because the dot is in front of the left parenthesis, which is not a non-terminal, so we don't add any new items here. And likewise, for the last item, F produces dot ID. The dot is in front of a terminal, uh, not a non-terminal, and so we don't add any new items for this. And this completes the computation of the closure of I, where I is this initial item uh, from the augmented grammar E prime produces E with the dot added in front of it. And so this is the thing that starts off the construction of all of these uh, sets of items as we'll see in, an, uh, in a couple more videos. We're going to produce a set of items that look like this and then these sets are going to correspond to states that make their way into the state table that allows us to decide when to push something onto the stack, when to reduce, when to go to another state, etc.